Hello and welcome to the Third Door channel. My name is Blake Chalfont and today's video is going to be all about uncomfortability and is going to be about a way of understanding it and how it actually shows up in our lives today and it is something that has drastically drastically changed my life and really just helped me live my life in a healthier way and um yeah really learning how to navigate my life and using uncomfortability as a tool because it doesn't have to be this thing that we just run away from and that we see as a bad sign um, and we can actually in a way see it as a really good sign so please stick around for the video um, I promise you that this is something that is really going to help you all in life when we can better understand this and so to begin I really want to take us back and go and visit some of our more primal ancestors our ancestors from the Stone Age that were living in a drastically different world living in a world where every day was a new day of finding shelter of finding food to eat of avoiding predators that were dangerous and could kill them finding warmth you know all these basic needs that we have that most of us have met today um, that our ancestors were having to that were, our ancestors were having to fend for every single day of their lives and so that's what uncomfortability meant to them was you know not having food to eat or being stalked by a fucking cyber-toothed tiger, tiger. Um, which we don't have that in our lives anymore. So to them, it was extremely helpful that they would avoid uncomfortability, right? Like if they can, if they can strive for comfort, great, they should, because they're living every single day of their lives in extreme discomfort, always having to um, think about some of these things that really could be the difference between life and death. Like it was very beneficial to our Stone Age ancestors that they were always scanning their environment for danger and what ifs. And if they could control as much of their environment as possible, then good, because it would avoid danger. And so I really wanna tie these concepts together that to the, because what we're really talking about is the way that our brains have evolved they evolved, they have been shaped around the environment that we have been in. And so during our Stone Age ancestors, their brains evolved so that they could adapt to the environment that they were in. And so how did our brains evolve? They evolved to avoid discomfort and seek comfort. Our brains evolved to always scan our environment for all, any potential threats any potential negatives, which was so helpful back then. Because when we're scanning our environment for potential threats or potential dangers, that could save our life. Like we're walking into a dark cave at night for shelter. It is very helpful that our brain naturally will, will, will be on alert, right? Our blood pressure will increase. Our sympathetic nervous system will come online and we'll be in a state of, you know, a little bit of fear and we'll be on edge. And thinking about it and basically just never never settling for what we have right now because as soon as we settle and get comfortable with where we are at that is a vulnerable position to be in because what happens when the next day comes and we can't find food so we should always be searching for more we should always be scanning our environment for these negatives and we should be avoiding discomfort as much as we possibly can okay and so what is comfortable? Comfort is things that are known to us. It's our known environment. It's things that we have become accustomed to, right? It's it like if we, if, we are, if we have grown accustomed to an environment, like a certain landscape, right? We know where, the, we know where our source of water is. We know where the animals we know where the animals are that we're going to hunt for dinner and we know where our shelter is. That's all this known stuff, right? That's super comfortable. There's no potential, there's no potential danger there because we have 
we've lived here for a while and we just know everything. There's not going to be many surprises versus we go into a completely new landscape. In this new completely landscape, there's going to be a ton of potential threat, right? We don't know where we're getting water from. We don't know what kind of animals live here. We don't know where the predators live. There's all this new new things to think about. There's all these new what if scenarios. That's a big thing, all these what ifs. Our brain has evolved to ask what if, because when we have made a list of all the what ifs, then we're gonna be ready for when, what if one of those what ifs actually happens? Like, what if a tiger comes from behind me right now and attacks? But when we have those thoughts and those parts of our brain that are already ready, anticipating these dangers, we're more ready when it actually happens. And so I hope I've painted a pretty decent, probably just decent, not very good. I hope I've painted a decent picture of the way that our brains have evolved during that time. And I'm totally not a super neuroscience-y guy. So this is definitely a dulled down version. Um, if you're looking for more detail, I recommend someone who's more of a neuroscience background. Um, but generally, that's just very general, that's a very general layout of how our brains were back then. And so now we are living in a drastically different world and our brains are not that different. And that's super important to really fully understand is that our environment has changed drastically, but our, brain, our brains are still operating in a way that we're still in those environments like our Stone Age ancestors were. But the thing is, we don't have to worry a lot about where our food's coming from or if we're gonna have shelter at night or if we're gonna get attacked by a predator. All those kind of Stone Age dangers are not present in our lives anymore, but our brains are still operating in the same way. We're still making the list of all the what ifs and we're still seeking comfort over discomfort. And like we said before, comfort is in our known. It's in the familiar, right? It's in the things we have control over. Where uncomfort is in all the unknowns in our life. It's in all the things we haven't explored or all the you know, unfamiliar environments. And so today, our seeking comfort actually sometimes really comes back to hurt us, right? What happens when the things we're seeking comfort in are actually kind of harmful to us? And now we can't let those behaviors go or we can't change because change is uncomfortable. Because going back to our ancestors, change could mean a potential new threat in an environment we haven't explored yet. And so the same change is showing up today and like, let's take someone who hates their job and wants a new job. Well, guess what? That change in their life there's a huge realm of unknown and what happens when I get what what happens when I quit my job and what if I get this new job and it ends up being horrible it's all of these what ifs or even just plain and simply wanting to change your life knowing that there is some part of your life that doesn't feel right or you feel like you're living a very unhealthy lifestyle and you want to change well that change is naturally going to be met with resistance because it is a huge unknown landscape and inside that huge unknown landscape, think about you're opening a door into this huge new vast realm of unknown. To your logical brain, you might be saying, well, well, great, inside this change is gonna be good because my life kind of sucks right now and I'm gonna start living a life that is healthier for me, that I'm gonna be happier in. Well, to these more ancient parts of your brain that have evolved in a way so that we're gonna, that we're gonna try and avoid discomfort as much as we can, it's gonna resist that because inside this change that you're making, there is potential new danger and threat because it is a vast new landscape that you have not explored yet. And so I really wanna hammer home the idea that even though it might logically make sense to you, or it, sorry, even though it might not make sense to you, why there would be discomfort because you're actually pursuing something that logically you know is gonna be good for you, these other parts of your brain that are much older and have much had 
much longer of a time to evolve, they don't think logically. They think in a they think in much more of a black and white scenario of avoid discomfort, pursue comfort. And so let's take another example of the person in your life that is in a super toxic relationship, right? And you're just like, why are you in this relationship? It clearly is not working, right? Everyone can see that you guys should just break up. Well, guess what? That is their known environment. They've been together for so long that has just become comfortable. Even though logically you know that this is toxic and is really unhealthy for me, it's still comfortable. And so you're fighting this reasoning, logical prefrontal cortex drive versus this more ancient drive that is just trying to keep you comfortable and keep you safe. And when you stay in this known environment, even if it's toxic as fuck, that still feels comfortable and that still feels safe. And so you're going to do that because evolutionarily, this part of our brain thinks that, that is when I, that's what's going to help us keep us alive. And so what, what might happen? What if you leave this relationship? Who knows? But there is an entire list of what ifs. I know everyone watching this video, we all have times in our life where we take a moment and we hear our thought and we're like, am I actually thinking that? Like, did I actually just have that thought? Cause that was fucking crazy. I can't believe I just thought that. It was just, it's just like the most bizarre, absurd, what if thought, right? That's because this part of our brain is making a huge list of what ifs because it might keep us safe. Even though to your logical brain, you're like, that would never happen, right? That would never happen. Why am I, why is my brain even thinking that? Because what if it did happen, right? Then we're going to be ready for it. An example that I like to use a lot from just from my personal experience in life, like going into big social gatherings or whatnot and having anxiety and yada, yada, yada. And, you know, some of that anxiety is normal and, um, is natural, but there's definitely a balance. And I think for me at a certain point, I was get, it was getting out of balance to where it was just like very overwhelming. And, um, and I'm going into, I'm going into a social gathering or a party with people that some I know, some I don't, but at the end of the day, they're probably mostly people that I'm going to get along with. And at worst, some people that I might just not be best friends with, but the amount of anxiety just doesn't feel like it is reasonable for the situation that I'm in. But to this part of our brain, it's like, what if you meet someone that you really don't like in that this person hurts you super fucking deeply and like all those what ifs or what if you go and what if you get in a fight and you get really hurt or, you know, what if you get extremely embarrassed by the people? Like all these, you, th you think about, the entire spectrum of what might happen. This part of your brain is going to be assessing the situation in case those things do happen. And it's gonna get you ready for all situations of potential danger because evolutionarily, that is what kept us alive, right? What if there's a saber-toothed tiger stalking my family? What if there's a saber-toothed tiger at this party I'm going to. It's the same kind of thing. I hope that's making sense. So it's really important. Really, I know I'm using a lot of examples and I hope I'm not confusing you all, but it's just really important that we lock in this concept that when we're doing things, and you can think about it in a habit too, right? You have a habit that you don't like and you want to form a new habit. Well, I think we all have experience of forming a new habit and it feels really hard. It feels very uncomfortable. It feels like we're almost lifting. It's almost like we're using a muscle that we've never used before that feels super weak versus the old habit that we're trying to get rid of feels just super comfortable, natural and strong, right? You're met with that uncomfortability and that resistance because you've grown so accustomed and comfortable to doing things a certain way that now to all of a sudden try and do something different your this part of our brain is gonna extremely resist it because who knows what might happen when you start to change so it's really important that we're just associating this change change in life change 
uncomfortability, unknown environments, all those things, those three things can kind of go hand in, can go hand in hand. This part of our brain is going to naturally resist those things because inside any form of change is a new environment. Think about it. You're changing into something new, something that you haven't really explored yet. Who, what, like what is going to happen? Who knows? And I know it logically doesn't quite make sense because you know that if change, you know that if you change deep down, you're going to be, you're going to be better off and be happier. But remember, this part of our brain that has evolved this way does not think logically, doesn't reason in the same way that our frontal cortex does. And so as you start to change, as you start to transform your life, and even if it's just doing a new habit or starting a new job or whatever it is, know that that resistance that you feel, that uncomfortability is completely normal. And it is not a sign that you should stop doing this new behavior. It doesn't mean you should stop on this new habit you're forming. It means keep going and just know that this is completely normal and that this is just a part of you that is trying to keep you safe and that is trying to protect you from any potential dangers or threats within this new unknown environment of who you are. And as you go into that, when we can start to deal with the uncomfortability that comes up or this resistance, if we can start to just understand that, wait, okay, that's natural, that's okay, I can keep going forward. It will make this path of new, of change, of transformation so much easier. And just so you know, it doesn't always have to be there. It doesn't always, it doesn't always, you know, it's not always going to just be right in your face, this huge amount of uncomfortability. It totally comes and goes, um, depending on how we can deal with it. And so this is a really important piece to this journey of starting to deal with the uncomfortability and resistance you feel in your life, which is, so let's, let's just, this is the evolutionary part of our brain that I'm talking about. This is the part of our brain that seeks comfort and avoids discomfort and does not want you to change because that is scary and it might be dangerous. And now here is the more newly evolved frontal cortex, which is the logical part of your brain that is doing all the reasoning. This is the part of your brain that says, none of this shit makes sense because I know that when I change, I'm going to be happier. This comfort seeking part of your brain does not care about this part of your brain. But over time, when we can start applying the things that I'm talking about and we can start saying, okay, this uncomfort, this resistance is natural and that is okay and it is just a part of this journey of change and I'm going to keep going and it's going to be okay, you're strengthening this part of your brain, this logical reasoning part of your brain, the part of your brain that can actually start to understand the job that this part of your brain is doing. So over time when we keep doing this, this part of your brain, the frontal cortex, continues to strengthen and strengthen and so over time doesn't have to be so hard over time it's just instant the chain the resistance the uncomfortability comes up we just instantly know how to deal with it and over time it doesn't even feel very uncomfortable because let's just break the uncomfortability apart for a second everything is uncomfortable before it's uncomfortable two people go skydiving out of the same plane one person's screaming for their dear life and the other person's having the greatest time in the world skydiving is not naturally uncomfortable it is our relationship to it and so things are only uncomfortable depending on our relationship to it and so it's the same thing here the the resistance and the uncomfortability that comes up when we're trying to change it's all about our relationship to that so over time as we can start doing these things that i'm talking about as we can start understanding more about them knowing that it's a natural part of our journey and actually continuing to move forward, knowing that it's gonna be okay, that it is safe, we are strengthening our relationship to it. We're strengthening our relationship to change to where it doesn't feel so bad anymore. And um, I can speak from my own personal experience. This 100% works wonders, wonders. I mean, 
I've had a lot of change in my life and some of the change that I've had in the beginning, like transferring schools and meet, finding new friends, all those was fucking so scary in the beginning. Like I didn't do it for a while because of the uncomfortability. And you know, now I'm getting ready to go to the Brazilian Amazon in a month. And that kind of feels like, eh, kind of exciting. So, um, not to boast my ego, but it does work. I promise you it does work. And boy, is it, is it so worth it? Because most of us live our entire lives behind the shield of uncomfortability and resistance. We want to do something and we want to change our life in a certain way. And then we're met with resistance. We're met with uncomfortability and we stop. We want to form a new habit and then it, and then it gets hard. And so we stop. But when we can start to understand that, wait, this uncomfortability, this resistance is completely normal and actually doesn't mean that I should stop what I'm doing, but actually it means in some ways that I'm on the right track. We keep going and our relationship to the uncomfortability starts to change and we start to get more comfortable with change in our life. And that to me is the greatest gift in the world. When we can get good at being in unknown environments and change, it opens up the horizons of who we can be, of what we can do in this life exponentially to where we get access to such deep states of freedom in our life where we get the choice now, what do I want to do? Because I am not being held back by resistance and uncomfortability anymore. So really just can't stress enough how important this is to every single human being on planet Earth's life because we are all living with relatively the same brains that have evolved in the same way. And so, you know, I hope that I broke down these concepts in a really understandable way that feels tangible and where you feel like you can turn the video off and start to live these kinds of concepts. But if I didn't, please reach out, please reach out so I can explain these better because I really just can't stress how amazing it is when we understand these things. So really just encouraging you all to start to change your relationship with uncomfortability in your life with this resistance and start opening up more of your own potential in this life. Thank you so much for listening. Please support my channel if you're liking the content and please let me know what you guys want to hear about, what you guys want me to talk about. And... Good luck on journey of life.